2020 Visions. <sighs> Madeline Hall, February 1961. Dear... Parents. I've fallen in love with a wonderful woman. Belinda. Will you stay with me tonight? My one true love. <laughs> Natasha. You screwed my mother on that bed and never said a single word about it. Natasha, Natasha, I hate you. Leave me alone. Lucy. I'm expecting pregnant. So I'm just the stud. Get out of my flat, bastard. Alec, love. Belinda. I'm nearly certain that I'm two months gone. Belinda, my one true love. Episode six. <sighs> the beginning of the end. <sighs> Come on, you, the balcony. We've got to snap that view of the salute in the morning light. <laughs> Cheese! No! Formaggio! <laughs> Excellent! Just right! <sighs> Where are you now, my secret treasure trove? you. There's Belinda's pink envelope. Oh. With her beautiful perfume. The necklace. <laughs> the fateful letter to my father. So, I did keep it after all. Ah, here it is, the very photograph that was to be my downfall and my greatest treasure. Belinda, beautiful as ever. Let me hold you in my arms once more. Alec, love, my period's overdue. Long since. I'm nearly certain that I'm two months gone. That's wonderful. The loveliest thing I've ever heard. I couldn't bring myself to breathe a word before. I was afraid you might have made a run for it. I thought the news would hit you hard. Did you not say that I was sent for you? That you were meant for me? That we'd be one forever? This is it. From that first kiss, I knew that we were absolutely right. I'm proud of us. There's nothing to be frightened of. We'll make it work. I know I shall. We'll show the world the power of love. My Alec. Oh, dear. Alec, are you... Sorry, Roz, nature calls. Alec, you've dropped something. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <sighs> Prehistoric photo. <laughs> Retro look. Venice. Alec, you dropped your photograph. Here it is. Thank you, Roz. <sighs> Back to the clearing up. Belinda, my darling. I was longing for our child. 
if only I would have loved him, or her, you would have lived on in our child, and I would never have betrayed you. Then again, I suppose our child was born forty years later. Lucy was hardly the ideal choice of surrogate mother, but her child was your child, Belinda, in a manner of speaking, and mine. I remember Lucy breaking the news in a usual tactful way. I'm expecting... What? Pregnant. Since when? Venice. I meant, when did you find you were? Didn't, but my body knows. Good God. I thought you said... I know. I lost my head a bit, that's all. Shitty little parasite. You were the one who wanted just a fling. Just fun. No strings attached. I thought if I was going to, I ought, before I get too old. Well, don't you think you might have told me? I thought you might say no. Ha! Too bloody right I would have. So I'm just the stud. That's all you care. Sounds fair enough, if that's the way you see it. What's that supposed to mean? All I'm saying is that I was reckoning on maybe, you know, bringing her or him up as a single parent. Oh, bloody hell. I don't believe it. Wait! I wasn't telling you that that's what I decided. I meant, suppose we tried to make a go of it and found it didn't work. We're bound to have some difficulties. You can't seem to stand my music, and I hate your me, me, me. So, what I mean is, we can stay friends, lovers even, only not have the upheaval or the risk of moving in together. She took off the necklace and gave it to me. It was all over. What's up? But at least I had the necklace again. And I have it still in my treasure trove. You've gone quiet. I'm so grateful for that. So, I've got the sack. No, I'm just being practical, that's all. Of course it's tough. But I don't want to force us into something... So you did lie? I did what? Torcello! What are you going on about? All the promises, love, constancy. But we agreed that... You needn't have used those. What was I supposed to say then? The truth. I was only playing out a role like we agreed. Ha! <laughs> you were leading me on, bleeding me dry, like the shitty little parasite you are. Get out of my flat, bastard. So, you've got everything. My child, my past. My secret. No, not all your secrets. I can't puzzle out yet why you had the necklace that she wore for lots of years before she met you. If I only knew that, then I would know you. It was... I was... Why should I tell you, you shitty little... Please yourself. It's your affair. And anyway, I dare say I can find out. Stop it. Stop it! Mary Poppins might agree to swap a few well-chosen gems. You... You wouldn't dare. Why not? Now we've got such a lot in common. Haven't we? The necklace? Venice? You? I reckon with some therapy she'd blurt it out. She'd dish the dirt on you as soon... You... Little bitch! You little bitch! Why did she ditch you then? You little... She... Perhaps I'll jog your memory. This ought to make you laugh. It's an amazing photograph I found somewhere or other. Looks a little bit like Mother. Can't be, though. Nice view, too. That's the view of the salute you showed me. It's unmistakable. I hadn't seen that photograph for 40 years. I remember taking it, though. Belinda must have kept it. So how did Lucy come to have it? It still puzzles me. And look there. Wonders never cease. She's wearing my nice necklace. Funny hairdo. 1960s look, I'd say. 
I'd love to know who took this picture. Can you tell me? Maybe? Does it ring a bell? I wonder if it's one of yours. Marcel. A little bump, too. Was she up the spout? Shut, Shut up! It's my flat! There's the door! Get out! That was Lucy all over. The investigative journalist, producing devastating evidence and posing awkward questions, without ever revealing her sources. The mystery photograph was her master stroke. To this day, I have no idea how she got her hands on it. I never even knew for sure whether she was actually in touch with her mother. As for the photo, there was definitely no bump, and yet she managed to work it all out perfectly. She was clever. I'll give her that. If only Belinda... If only our baby... <laughs> that was two children lost to me. <laughs> Lucy had no further use for me. She made sure I would never darken her door again. I probably had the right to see the child. My child. But Lucy would have made her think I was a monster. I couldn't have faced that. Better to be a nobody. I knew what it was to be a nobody after Belinda. And then again after Nasher. It started so well with Nasher. We were the same age, the same temperament, a perfect match for each other. She loved me, and I loved her, in a way. But every time I looked at her, I saw Belinda. Every time she spoke, I heard Belinda. Every time I kissed her, I was kissing Belinda. When we were in Venice, I was with Belinda. It was only a matter of time before Natasha found me out. She was going through my things, drilling deep. She even managed to come up with a score of my string quartet that had been buried away since forever. Whatever's this? A string quartet. Of yours? Yes. Just another thing I didn't seem to know about my enigmatic husband. When did you do this? Oh, there are lots of those. I've been composing on and off for 15 years or so. I can't help wondering if there's any end to all these hidden talents. That one's from my maladroit phase. I'm not fussed about it. It's the dustbin for that one. Wait! Not so fast! You've got to get your wife's permission first. I've always thought of composition as a little sideline that might pay its way one day. But I'd prefer if that quartet was missed out from my list of works. Perhaps some musicologist might want it when you've made your name. That's pretty much what I'm afraid of. But I want to know you. Everything about you. You can't throw this sort of thing away. I plan to cherish every single bit of you. There's no escaping now. I've got you in my power. I'm ready any time you want to exercise your power over me. <laughs> Oh, you're sex mad. <laughs> but I'm only doing what I told you in Torcello, having you and holding you. And that's exactly what I plan for this in point of fact. <laughs> What's that? Now that I have it, I intend to hold on to it to the very end of time. I think we both deserve a drink. Indeed. I'll drink to that. I should have known she'd go through everything. She was obviously intending to catalogue my entire existence into a neat little library. We ought to have a flat warming or something. And there was the photograph. Maybe when we sign the register we could come back for wine and... Did I leave it there on purpose? Surely I couldn't have been that stupid. Yes, we ought to make a little splash, I'm sure. Anyway, she was bound to find it sooner or later. Natasha, what? I didn't know you had a photo of my mother. Maybe it was a good thing that she found it. Yes, I took it. Not from me. I haven't got that picture, never had. Though I can still feel the pain of it. I meant she posed for me. How come she chose to do a thing like that? She was... we were... in love. Good God. 
But that's obscene. She must have been as old as your own mother. Well, another of your church porch conquests, I suppose? She wasn't. No, that isn't fair. I used to be a pianist. I played a student concert. She invited me for tea in her flat. I went with her. She seduced me on the spot. That's monstrous. You're a liar. That's what you are. My own mother. You might as well get used to the idea, for it's absolutely true. Of all the shabby... No, no, not shabby. It was beautiful. I shall call it what... The necklace. She was wearing... You recognised it straight away. You instigated our relationship because of... <sighs> The humiliation of... That isn't true! Incredible as it... You lied to me! I never did! You lied! Deliberately! You never need explain. That's what you said. Natasha, please! Shut I... up! Then she found Belinda's Venice book, opened it at the inscription, and recognised the handwriting. <gasps> I am not perfidious! You took her out to Venice. She took me. And no doubt the two of you spent all week screwing one another. No, making love. Don't say such things, for goodness sake. Monster! My own mother. My own dear. My one true love. The balcony. The view. Before we looked, you knew what we would see. Ah. The poverty of it. You screwed my mother on that bed and never said a single word about it. I'm fairly sure they had replaced the bed. Now she's dead. It's my turn to be screwed. And all your platitudinous... The porch, the pelting rain, how la research de tomb hurt you. Oh, perfidious bastard! <sighs> you came back to look for me. <laughs> now I can read you like that book. You, she... <sighs> Just tell me one more thing. You took her to Torcello. It was she that took me. She gave me the book. And you gave her? Not this. The necklace. She tore it off and flung it at me as if it was a deadly viper. And with the kiss of Judas, you betrayed me. I just played into your... Natasha, please! Oh, it disgusts me now! I thought it must be something she... How utterly humiliating! More than 20 years I wore it out of love for her. Now you can shove it up your backside, Judas. That's the best place for it. I detest you! Natasha. Never speak to me again. It was terrifying. I thought she was going to ask me about the inquest. Eclampsia, I remember. That was the cause of Belinda's death, the coroner said. I'd never heard of it. But the press report said the mortality rate of pregnant women aged 40 or more was particularly high. Natasha must have realized I was the father of the unborn... I'll never forget the picture of her in the paper. 
the wounded daughter of the disgraced mother, wearing the necklace too. She looked so ashamed. Lovely, too. She was only twenty, same as me. I was a Judas. She was right. I didn't have the guts to face the inquest. All my fine words were lies. One forever, nothing to be frightened of. Show the world the power of love. What did I do? Hold up in my digs, half expecting the policeman's knock in the middle of the night, taking me away to face the truth. I'll bail you out. No obstacle too great. Why didn't Natasha mention the inquest? The memory of it must have been painfully branded on her mind. Why didn't she? I've never been able to explain that. She was the victim, not I. I never saw her again. The pain of it would have been unbearable. My Alec. But worse, Belinda, my one true love, and I betrayed you utterly. <laughs> Twenty Twenty Visions by Paddy Gormley With Maurice Thorogood as Alec George O'Reilly as Alex Carer in his eighties And his three lovers Sarah Laurie as Lucy in the year 2000 Sophie Morris Shepherd as Natasha, 1980 Olivia Busby as Belinda, 1960 Twenty Twenty Visions is a Twenty Twenty Audio Drama Company production